and turn it over to Helena and Saskia. Okay, I take it you can see my screen. Um, yeah, so Helena and I uh, would like to talk to you today about the GTN Video Library and the course builder that we built with that. Um, so the GTN Video Library um, is sort of like a sister site to the GTN. It grew out of the first uh, smorgasbord training event where we had recorded tutorials for people to watch and then we figured it'd be nice to offer these to the community to be reused. Um, so we have recordings of people up from the community teaching um, several of the GTN tutorials. So um, here's a link to the website. Um, we've also integrated this with the GTN website itself. So at the uh, top of every tutorial, if there are recordings for that tutorial, you can access them from there. And then you can watch uh, an instructor go through the tutorial and walk you through it step by step. So this is great for self-paced learning um, and for uh, other events. Um, so yeah, this is just a little bit what it looks like. So every um, tutorial video is listed here uh, on this uh, website. You have a link to the video on YouTube. We have a description, the length, uh, who worked, uh, helped um, through the caption. So all our videos are captioned uh, when it was created, because of course, this is a snapshot of the tutorial. Um, the tutorial may have changed since this moment. Uh, here it links to the um, the GTN tutorials and maybe slides, everything that's covered in the video, if the participants want to follow along and read also the documentation. Um, because we archive every month the entire GTN, we can link to the version um, that was used in the video. Um, and for that first smorgasbord, we use Slack to help participants and every video, every tutorial has its own channel. So people can go there to, to ask questions even outside of uh, any of the events. Uh, we link to Gitter, the Galaxy Help Forum, everything. Um, yeah, we've tried to organize this into different uh, training modules. So we have, we start with just some, you know, learning Galaxy, the first introduction, an introduction for people who don't, uh, aren't uh, using it for genomics some advanced Galaxy features where you can learn about workflows and histories and the rule builder and things like that. And then just grouped by sort of the type of analysis people might be interested in learning about, like transcriptomics, proteomics, single cell, or what kind of sample uh, type they have. They have plant data, source data, microbial data. Um, yeah, and then we also have a bunch of non-genomics modules, including uh, admin trainer and dev training and just other scientific topics. Um, yeah, so these modules again look like that. Each one of these is one tutorial uh, with a video, which can be expanded to see this video page. Oh. Right. Um, so this sort of uh, tries to be a sort of a learning path so that it's, you can really follow this page from top to bottom if you want to learn about genomics. Um, so also we have guides for instructors. So if anybody, uh, anybody's welcome to record a video for this uh, at any time, then we linked to the, um, the tutorial itself. We have guides about how to do those tips and tricks, uh, how you can submit your video, um, what, what will happen with the captions and everything. Um, and yes, if anybody here is interested in doing this, we need also frequent re-recordings of existing uh, tutorials because first of all, the tutorials change frequently, but also Galaxy changes a lot. So for example, recently the entire history panel in Galaxy has changed. So almost all of the videos are now outdated. And then especially for sort of the introductory videos, it'd be really nice to have a re-recording uh, with you know current Galaxy and a current version of this tutorial. So if anyone in the community would like to re-record um, it'd be great. And then we will also use the current set of videos always in our yearly smorgasbord uh, online training event. Um, yeah, so this is just the page for last smorgasbord. It was really um, on the same website and this was very flexible. So people could really come in, choose what they wanted to learn. We didn't have a fixed, um, fixed program, but they could, um, yeah decide what to do and when to do it. Um, so they had a had choice of all these videos and we are going to organize the next one again um, for next year. Um, 
So then after we've done these uh, smorgasbord events, other people also came to us as like, okay, I would like to organize a similar sort of event and online training that involves Galaxy. Can we reuse your videos? But they also, uh, we noticed they really wanted to, to get an easy way to get such a website for the, for the course, because that's also a barrier for a lot of organizers. So we tried to make this um, simpler for them. So we have uh, tried to structure a little bit how you can easily define such a um, course website like we use for Smorgasbord. Um, it's, at first it was a little bit, it was a YAML definition. So you just say, um, give some metadata, the dates, and then which videos you'd like to include and in which order and the whole program could define that way. Um, so usually we helped people to do that, to get that set up, to configure the YAML uh, because it wasn't very user-friendly, but we had, um, yeah, several different, um, people from the community organize a workshop with these videos on our website. Uh, but then we figured we wanted to make it a little bit easier, more user-friendly that you don't have to muck around with a YAML file or that we don't have to do it for everyone. So Helena started building a course builder. And I will take, yes. Yeah. yeah, so given the community demand to create their own, create your own events, we you know are involved in like an EOSC Life seminar where a lot of people are discussing their different course builder solutions that some people use, you know, Word, and some people had a very specific CMS they used for managing courses and like at putting together course websites. That seems to be a really important thing for the training community that you have something nice and aesthetically pleasing and accessible that you can give out to your community and say, okay, here's all the content, go follow this course, or here are the resources you'll need to follow this course synchronously or asynchronously. And so yeah, we put together a beta of this course builder. We, I, uh, it was originally written sort of directly in our course building, our video library website. I've now rewritten it as a view application. It's my first view application, so that's fun. Um, lots of learning experiences there. The idea was that here you can sort of select different courses and put together something that you might want to use. So let's have a quick live demo. Is this the older version. I'm going to edit the URL to that. This is the newer version. Here you can do things like pick out some setup instructions. Maybe you want a code of conduct, a logistics, and a feedback section. Uh, maybe you're doing quality control mapping. Um, and let's say using R and Galaxy. And you can go over to the schedule tab where you have all of your different sections added. You can manage sections. So this can be something like day one and day two, or just day one. And then once you add or click these things, they will add or remove them from your schedule. You can then, you know, rearrange by drag and drop um, all the sorts of interactive features people seem to desire. Once you go to the configure event, you can select things like, okay, the this event is being led by Saskia and I'm the contact person. And it's affiliated with a couple of different institutions. And when you're done with that, you'll go to the export tab and get some markdown that contains all of the same information and that can be directly put into the course website. It knows about who all the instructors are, who all the contacts are, how to get or set up the different sections that you would want to use, what order to put them in and you could write some additional content there. So moving back to the slides. We started to think about, OK, if we want to take this out of our beta version, what, what do we really need? What, what's required to make this sort of more production ready? Who is our audience and what do they need? And this is sort of a, a big key thing for us is that we found we wrote some, you know, we talked to some different people in the communities, tried to find out what they want. These are the sort of stories that we hear from them. They, they want to be able to create their own courses. They want to drag and drop to rearrange things. They want to bring in their own materials and not just use the existing video library or not just use the existing training materials. And some of them are familiar with GitHub and some of them aren't familiar with GitHub and have significant time pressures where they need to get this course done, this course page thrown together really quickly. Uh, they may be wanting to use what we already have, but if they're not a strong Git user, then we have to think about how we can accommodate the sort of use cases. And looking at the sort of gaps between what we've built and what is really needed by the community, 
I mean, we've built something nice, but it requires you really have some pre-existing skills as a trainer, as a developer, that you're familiar with GitHub, that you're able to copy and paste this YAML that we've given you into GitHub, into a pull request. And while this definitely seems on the very easy end of activities and skills for a lot of us on this call, I know, uh, because we do this every day, the training community finds this to be a lot more complicated in general. And we end up spending a lot of time helping them, updating things for them and just saying, please tell us what you want changed, we'll go change it, which is you know, not ideal. And if we really want to take that into something that they can use, that would really require like, okay, do we need to build a server where we can, instead of having a copy this YAML, we can have a make a pull request to add this course to the course builder page. Um, there are no live previews currently. Do we need to, you know, spin up a job to compile the website on the fly? Do we need to fake it? You know, pre-rendering these sort of boxes. Do we need to rewrite the whole course web the video library in view just to support that sort of activity, just so they can get a live preview of it? Um, do these users need to be able to re-edit courses that they've already submitted in an open pull request? If they say, oh, wait, I need to, you know, add a new person, I need to add a new funding logo, blah, blah, blah. And it leaves me with the impression that, okay, there's, we've built something nice and useful, but the target audience of it would really require us to make significant, significant time investments, order of magnitude more than we've already invested in it, to get it to somewhere that the product can actually work for the users who need it which is unfortunate. And maybe we can, you know, cross some of the smaller bridges, but it's sort of a question. And we just wanted to share this sort of experience story of like, okay, we've built something, something that we're happy with, but making sure it actually meets user needs has been a challenge given the rather non-technical training community. So it's, yeah, not the happiest report, but. It's an interesting, you know, it's a journal of negative results, right? We, we build something, but maybe it's not something that's going to be part of our permanent workflow. Do you have anything to add to that? No, so for the most part, we've still been helping people manually to, to get their websites up rather than just pointing them to the course builder and then they can completely do it. So we would need a lot more work and right now. We don't have the time. I'm not sure if it's worth the time investment. Yeah. So it's, yeah. Uh, yeah, it's where we're at right now. But moving on, uh, that's Smorgasbord uh, 3 is coming up. Yeah, we're going to sort of use this whole video library infrastructure again for the next Smorgasbord. Uh, and since it's been growing like uh, every year in both the uh, amount of content and the number of uh, participants. So we'd really love help from the community um, to, to get this, uh, this going. And there are different ways to help depending on what you're interested in, how much time you have, but like re-recording existing videos with the new versions of the of Galaxy would be a great help. Um, additional tutorials that never have been recorded. Um, the participants last time we had 3000 registrations, the year before we had 1200. So there's lots of interest um for all topics so anything that you might feel like recording would be helpful there's someone um, in the community who would definitely appreciate yeah, yeah, sure. it any video will follow it um yeah dissemination without uh dave and bia uh we're a little bit lost in this aspect so if someone has um expertise in this or knows good places to disseminate please uh let us know uh, general uh, organizational things like helping us find speakers and people to help out during the event and yeah there are lots of little little things to do there and uh, we also we always want smorgasbord to, to be uh, most of the tutorials to be able to run on the big three uh, use galaxy servers uh, so us eu and australia um, so that's always a, uh, some effort in advance to sort of help um, test all the tutorial workflows on these servers and see which tools are missing, which other things are missing or not working, um, so that we can get everything updated and ready. And just anyone who likes organizing these events and maybe helping us brainstorm how we can improve interactions or if we can try yeah. to arrange some social sessions, because it's still an online event, so you don't have this face-to-face -face aspect of what is nice in the in workshops to 
to yeah. interact with other participants. Um, so anything like that, if anybody's interested, please uh, contact us. And we'd do, do we actually know what uh, Dave and Bea, who's on the call, <laughs> uh, mm -hmm. did to, um, yeah, to reach such a wide audience? So I think it's a lot of mailing lists, a lot of contacting the right people and saying, hey, here's our announcement, you know, writing up some copy for the announcements that go out to the relevant places and saying, look, here's what's interesting to your community. It's a time intensive job and I'm really looking forward to, you know, new staff filling those roles. So it's it's more the writing the content versus knowing where to send it or both? Oh, it's both. Okay, because I, I guess the where to send it maybe we can try to yeah ask so very nicely <laughs> we, we had a meeting earlier about uh, the next smorgasbord and we're gonna start uh, like a spreadsheet where people can add like good mm -hmm. places to mailing lists and stuff like that to add this but like to organize when to do this and how to do this and, and how to phrase it and like that's all very sort of tailoring that to the communities yeah, special skill in this. it's time intensive yeah. I mean, if you guys have a so much have a spreadsheet uh, of like the places you are going to send to and which ones still need sending, then I would definitely participate in the few mailing lists I know that would be relevant. Okay. That's, good. That's good. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Um, that was actually it for what we wanted to share with you today. Yes. So is there any questions about any of this? Please let's. Oh, can we ask questions now or? Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, so this is really, um, really great work. I was just wondering, um, and this is, a, I've wondered about this before, but I haven't had time to look into it in depth. I know Natalie had worked with someone who had done something similar when it came to video tutorials, but I was wondering in your research, if you found anything that like um, enabled us to or enable people to create videos that were easier to update you know like slotting in different screens or, or something like that i know there's people do sometimes like animation or voiceover and that sort of thing but you know instead of like redoing um videos that we have um i mean yeah. some merit you know being redone because there was maybe some incorrect information but you know, for, for ones because the site changes, you know, which is of course something we want. How, in your research, did you find some good solutions? So for, for the lectures, we actually have automated videos. So Helena set this up so that uh, for these slides, we have good speaker notes. And sometimes we just like uh, looked at a real video and, and wrote down what the speaker actually said, use those captions. But those are then with text to speech automatically generated. So, a video of all the slides and then uh, different robot voices uh, narrating that. Uh, lots of people still prefer like a live narrator. Yeah. Um, they may need different. to get over that though. Yeah. Um, and for tutorials, for tutorials for the admin training, I've got a proof of concept where we can completely automatically record an entire end to end tutorial showing the galaxy changes, the command line, what the command line execution outputs, um, what's going on in the tutorial, and then showing what changed in galaxy. But I've only done that for a single tutorial so far as proof of concept. And it takes you know an hour and a half to re-record anytime something goes wrong or anytime we update, which is, I mean, so much better than a human doing it. But mm -hmm. Yeah, it's it's a big in time investment, and I'm working on something to do the same for the Galaxy tutorials, but that's an even harder problem. The admin training problem is like nothing compared to working with the Galaxy interface in a programmatic way and really annotating tutorials to say, okay, now we're going to you know upload this data, we're going to click rerun, the reruns, everyone does rerun, and expressing that in the tutorial in you know some commands that we should say here extract the script go interact with galaxy in this way is more difficult than i expected mm -hmm. yeah we those at least give us voiceovers um and we can use those if someone wants to click around yeah we don't end up doing a lot of like splicing videos currently it's it's definitely something people could do if they wanted yeah so we do recommend for like live uh speakers to record in, in sections, do like one section of the tutorial. And then if something changes in one section, you just you can maybe just re-record that and we can splice that. And some have done this. And sometimes we've 
when they realize they made a mistake later or a tool change, we've done that, but not on a large scale yet. Most people have just recorded the whole thing at once. And then, uh, so yeah, this is a challenge for us as well. So don't know um, if you have any insights, but. Do you have a feeling on <clears throat> whether it would help? I mean, um, I, I mean, you're recording the date at which other video was recorded, so you can also go back and see what the state of the tutorial was versus the state that is now. Is, do you do you have a feeling on whether the git diff is helpful, so you know which parts have changed? Yes, but that's gotten less helpful with the thing with the addition of things like okay, we have the new FAQ system where all of the snippets uh, yeah. that reusable snippets can get updated, and I think the history is really the biggest biggest item that every single Galaxy video looks different now than if it was recorded six months ago, hmm. just due to the new history and differing on the workflows. If we assume that people keep those in sync, it's a strong assumption. You know. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, with the yeah. workflows, we could definitely tell. That's a good point. Yeah. Any other questions? Uh, yeah, I do have a question. So yeah, I think also this is great. Uh, can you explain a little more how you automatize the, you said you did it with one video, but you were mm -hmm. able to automize it? How, what, yeah, yeah. How we've... does this work? Sure. You should attend my, you know, talk at use or European Galaxy Days where I explained it in detail. Um, yeah, we right. write into the tutorial a script a bit. We write down. So this was the CBMFS tutorial. I wrote down, I extracted actually the subtitles from Simon's recording of it, and put all of Simon's words into like little boxes of okay, now speak this, now speak this. We annotated all of the commands and we have all of the commits. So oh, there we I can see. say okay. Let's extract a script from top to bottom of the file. Now do this, now do this, now do this. And then these get turned into recordings through multiple different ways. Okay. But it all happens in GitHub action, which is neat. Pretty cool, yeah. And then second question, uh, do the tours play any role? Could they be helpful in this context or are they just that, not uh, functional enough? This was something brought up by Keith. Um, last year, I think, probably around the same time. And we had looked through the tutorial, the tours that were currently in the training materials, and most of them are either very outdated or do not actually execute enough steps to follow the entire tutorial, which is not great. Right. And if we if we mark up the videos with, you know, these speaker notes and these steps, those could become auto-generated tours in the future, which would provide another modality for learners. And that's probably a good thing that, you know, they can have a self-guided tour inside Galaxy. That'd be really cool. Um, mm. But as of now, the tours that we have available are not good enough. And I, I don't know if that's a problem with Galaxy or if it's a problem with, you know, tour implementation or really just with the tours that we have on hand. But using the tours for recording is definitely an idea. In general, though, we like to swap back and forth between the training material and the, the Galaxy recording bit and making sure those are spliced together in the right order with the right amount mm -hmm. of time for each is non-trivial. Yeah, good question, thanks. Makes sense, thank you. Okay. Well, please let us know if you'd like to be involved in Smorgasbord. We would love to have you. We're starting a spreadsheet, I believe, for who will be our module leads, and we'll be contacting the community coming soon to let you know what dates get picked and what we need help with. Awesome. Thank you so much, Besky and Helena, for your presentation. Uh, and we'll definitely be on the lookout for the dates and ways that we can plug in and help. Great, thanks. Fantastic. Marius. Thank you. Uh, do you have a question, Marius? Oh, no, that's the clap. <laughs> oh, <I'm laughing. laughs> Nice. OK. Awesome. Thank you so, so much. So our next community call is on December 8th. Um, we're taking volunteers. If you have anything that you'd like to present or share, 
um, please let me know and I can get you added to the schedule. Um, I'll also be looking out to uh, schedule out the next year of um, community calls. So uh, be on the lookout for that as well, or let me know uh, if you have a specific time when you'd like to present. Thanks, everybody. See you in December. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you.